And welcome back to our very, very special MongoDB TV live stream here from Dot Local, New York City. So my name is Anaya, and I am so excited to announce our next guest, James Kovacs. He is actually a director of engineering in database experience, which builds our drivers and client tooling. So today we are going to be chatting a little bit about the entity framework core. If you remember from the keynote earlier, it was announced today, which is very exciting. So James, how are you feeling being here today? Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your favorite part of the day so far? Sure, more than happy to. I'm very excited to be here. We are, as you mentioned, launching Entity Framework Core Provider for MongoDB. We partnered with Microsoft, and it was a really a year-long effort to get to where we are today. Uh, I will, the obvious thing to say in terms of my favorite thing coming out of MongoDB.local is Entity Framework, but... I will actually change it up and say that the announcement of supporting both Atlas Search and Vector Search in Community Edition is a really big win for all developers. Yeah, I agree with you on that. We actually had a developer day yesterday, and that was one of the questions I got most frequently when they're using MongoDB locally on their laptops. Are they able to use features such as Atlas Search and Vector Search? And I had to sit there and say, I don't know yet. We'll find <laughs> out. But super cool that you were able to collab with Microsoft. Can you tell me a little bit more about the process of Entity Framework? I heard that it was kind of in the makings for over 15 years, right? So yeah. so we have been building the C-Sharp driver, which is our own API. It's very similar to the other language APIs that we have, but catered to the C-Sharp developer. So we use like Pascal case and have link support and all the other funny and fun things that a C-sharp developer would expect. But the dominant ORM, ODM in the Microsoft space is Entity Framework. So for the past probably three or four years, we've talked about, hey, we should do our own Entity Framework provider to allow us to integrate with the Microsoft ecosystem. And there were a number of community members that made similar APIs to Entity Framework, but it wasn't full-fledged Entity Framework. Uh, so we had this idea of doing it, but we didn't have the engineering resources and uh, the know-how. So we reached out to Microsoft to collaborate. And a colleague of mine had formerly worked at, at Microsoft and was a consultant, Damien Gard. And he worked with us, uh, as well as Microsoft, to build it out for the past year. It was a real team effort. We had everybody on the C-Sharp team actually contributing to it, but he was the major implementer of Entity Framework itself. And it's been extra, extremely successful, lots of interest. Um, there's just been a huge groundswell from the community of people wanting to use it and wanting to know when it's general availability, when it's GA, and that is today. I love that. Thank you for answering that. I'm actually going to take it back really quickly. For There are probably some developers who've never heard of Entity Framework before. So can we sure. just give like a high-level understanding of exactly what it is and why it's so important and crucial for developers that use the C Sharp driver or .NET? So Entity Framework is Microsoft's object relational mapper or object document mapper, depending on how you want to look at it. It allows you to have the mental model of a sta creating a database context, loading data into that context, manipulating it with C Sharp. So you can change properties, add items to collections, just change it however your business rules say and then you say save changes to the database context and magically Entity Framework figures out the diff and sends that back to the database. So it's a really nice mental model of being able to manipulate data using C Sharp, using familiar paradigms and then just saying, hey Framework, worry about the details of how to persist this. I love that. And then so what are some real life use cases for Entity Framework Core and are there any really cool examples that you've seen recently that you'd like to talk about? Sure. Where I really see Entity Framework fitting is your typical line of business application. You are not worried about getting, although we get good performance, you're not worried about getting the last every ounce of performance. It's the same place that Rails and Mongoose and other ORM ODMs operate. They give you this nice mental model that allows you to manipulate and build applications very quickly without having to worry about the data layer in a really intimate way. So any type of line of business application, it is a really good candidate. One of the design goals of Entity Framework was to make it work with the C-Sharp driver. It's actually built on top of the C-Sharp driver. And so you could actually configure your database context with a Mongo client, which is 
what the C-sharp driver uses. And that allows you an escape. So if you're doing everything that you want in any framework and you're like, oh, I want to do some Atlas search or I want to do some vector search or I want to do some index management, which entity framework doesn't support at the moment, you can just grab the Mongo client, do your normal MongoDB type of things, and it all plays nicely together. I love that. Thank you for answering that. So now it's generally available. It used to be back in, I believe, public preview in November, right? That's right. So what is different today that's different from the previous version of it? So the public preview was not meant for production workloads. It was an early cut. Uh, It didn't support nested objects, nested collections. Uh, There were many features missing. It also worked on Entity Framework 7 uh, and .NET 7 with with, uh, Entity Framework with. The Entity Framework 8 was released last November by Microsoft, and Entity Framework 7 goes out of support in June. So we didn't want to release a version that would be out of support in a, in a month or so. Yeah. So the GA release is uh, our EF8 provider. So it is compatible with, it, it is 8.0.0, and it is compatible with Entity Framework 8 and .NET 8. So it's the latest, greatest technologies for building new applications. I love that. So let's take it back a little bit. What got you, how did you get into, you know, all of this? How did you get here to MongoDB, get in combination with Microsoft and start building stuff with C Sharp and working on um, client tools? Oh, okay. Uh, Where I came from was a consulting world. Um, I've been doing uh, .NET since the 1.0 betas back in 99. Yes, I'm dating myself. I'm really that old. And I, I worked in the Microsoft space for many, many years. I also did a stint in uh, the Rails community, did a lot of Ruby work. And so it, I've always been a developer at heart. I've been an architect, a team lead, an engineer, a developer. Like I've had all these hats on. And a number of years ago, I had an opportunity to interview at MongoDB, and I decided to take that opportunity. And I spent four years on our support team. I uh, worked out of the Austin office from Canada, which was a fun experience. And then I wanted, decided that I wanted to have more impact on our customers, rather than working on individual customer problems, which are incredibly important, and the support team does an awesome job of that. I wanted to go broader and solve some of the fundamental issues, make our APIs more easily accessible to all developers. And that's why I moved over to database experience, where we build all of our drivers, our client tooling, and much of the other first touch experience that developers have with our stack. Perfect. And then what are some things that we can look forward to? Are you going to be at any events in the future? Oh, the team is going to be at MS Build coming up at the end of the month. I'm not going to personally be there, but we've got another number. Luce Carter from Developer Relations is going to be there, as well as a number of our other marketing team. Um, So we've got lots of other events coming up. Uh, We're I'm currently talking to Microsoft about some other collaborations uh, around Aspire and some of the other events that are happening um, in November with the release of .NET 9 and EF9. So we're talking about these things. Nothing is in the books yet. Perfect. And I know that you had a talk here, right, at Dot .local. How did that go? It went really well. I was pleased to clock it in under the 20-minute mark. I had a very action-packed demo. De- demonstrating all the key capabilities of Entity Framework as we're releasing them. I did want to say that we're continuing to invest. It's not a one and done. We are continuing to get engaged with the engineering effort. We've got more features coming. There were some things that didn't get into the GA, uh, like MongoDB transaction support and scalar projections that we're going to be getting into future releases. As well, one of the unique aspects of Entity Framework is if you write a provider for uh, Entity Framework 7, it only works in Entity Framework 7. If you write one for Entity Framework 8, it only works in EF8. Although the changes are uh, small between them to sort of use the new a- internal APIs, they have to be made. So we this release is for Entity Framework 8, but we're continuing to invest. When Microsoft releases Entity Framework 9 in November, we're going to have a compatible provider released at that time. So we're continuing that collaboration. The other nice thing about the Entity Framework uh collaboration is that they are learning as much from us as we are learning from them. We're able to ask about their internal APIs and what they intended and how they're to be used. Uh, and they provided us with a wealth of knowledge. But as well, we are the first true document database to write a provider for Entity Framework. So they're thinking of a refactoring some of their internals to improve the ability to work across all databases. Very cool. It's cool that this is kind of paving the way for that. 
So then I want to give a little shout out to Luz Carter. I saw that she actually published an article just this morning before this was all announced, um, going over what's new with the MongoDB provider for Entity Framework 4. So that is super awesome. Shout out, Luz. We love you. And then for if developers want to learn more and they need resources, can you help point us in a direction where they can go? Uh, so you can do, go to our official documentation. Uh, we have it updated for EF8. We're going to continue adding additional content as both to round out the feature set of what has already been implemented as well as going forward. So that's the best place to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was great. It was great getting to know you and chat with you, James. My pleasure. It has been an absolute delight. Mm-hmm.